Hello fellow book nerds, this is Gabby and today we are talking about In a Garden Burning Gold by Rory Power. In a Garden Burning Gold is Rory Power's adult fantasy debut. So Rory Power is an author that wrote Wilder Girls and burning our bodies down or something like that which i haven't read the authors now come out with a brand new book it's new age category young adult new genre fantasy oh my god why was that so hard new age category new genre and a new reader apparently because i decided to pick it up and share my thoughts with you so let's start with a little bit of a synopsis what is in a garden burning gold about so we follow two siblings uh ria and lexis who are twins and they are um son and daughter of this very powerful ruler uh, it's a Balkan region mythology inspired fantasy and in this world we have these like rulers of each um area they call like Strago Stragovoisi Stragovoisi I don't know uh, but they're called something like that and each ruler rules a certain area of this um big country and they all kind of work together and um they're supposed to kind of have this collection of rulers if that makes sense but each ruler is actually in charge of responsible of different natural phenomenons i guess so you can call it so that the, the father can for example dole out death so that's his power every name that he says in the evening will uh, the person will die there and then and that's how natural death happens in this world then his daughter Rhea, um, her power is that she makes the seasons change, but the way she makes the seasons change is by marrying a new concert every season and then killing them at the end of the season. And that's how seasons come about. Then Lexis, the son, he is responsible for the night sky. So every night he um, embroiders the night sky and that's how night sky happens. He's also responsible for seas and rivers, that kind of thing. Then they also have two other siblings. So the sister, uh, the younger sister is responsible for changing seasons by like colors and whatever she paints goes into the world and is reflected in the real world. And the youngest son, he has the power of creating this mechanical creatures and whatever he creates in this garden, in this palace that they live in will be reflected in the real world. So the legend says that the, these powers used to belong to the earth and used to be natural phenomenon and then the saints took it from the earth and saints ruled for a long time but then there was an uprising let's call it and the saints have been all killed and one of the saints took everyone's power and since then the powers have like slowly dissected onto the ruling families. So our main characters are Rhea and Lexis and they're twins and we hear from both of their perspectives. So the main kind of plot thing happening is that there is unrest in this country and people are starting to really question the main character's father's rule and you know the siblings might end up on different sides of the conflict so that's the synopsis so if you don't know my reviews are all pretty much the same we're gonna plot writing characters themes there's gonna be timestamps down below so do skip around and at the end i'm gonna share my overall thoughts but no spoilers so don't worry <music> so let's start with writing so i thought it was absolutely gorgeous it wasn't like overly poetic or purpley but it just conveyed the world in such a rich way i was just stunned <laughs> like i was shocked gobbersmacked whatever else i was that it was absolutely gorgeously just woven together in a way that was beautiful and the words just made the world come alive and just felt so lavish and beautiful and like you could touch it and i really really enjoyed that aspect of the writing everything was so decadent i don't know how but i felt like i could taste everything you know what i mean maybe you know what i mean it was absolutely gorgeous writing and again not overtly purple or anything but I just i just felt like it portrayed and conveyed everything he needed to i didn't really realize what that like magic system was like all of that i kind of i read the synopsis but you know i always forget it as soon as i read it and went into blind and it was like wow and even like exposition was done so seamlessly it felt like there wasn't exposition it was all done so well i feel like it was woven into the tapestry of this story so 
so beautiful and i really like how we found that information in like very organic way that didn't feel like an exposition i mean obviously to an extent it was because we need to learn about this world but it was done so well and really felt seamless now let's talk about the plot so it was very slow i don't know if you're into that kind of story but it was purely political intrigue fantasy not really much happened and the pacing was pretty slow i did also see in a couple of reviews on goodreads people mentioned the pacing and saying that that didn't work i don't think it was necessarily like bad writing or it, it came out as it was intended i think the author wanted it to be super slow nothing really happens we're just setting up all of these gears that will eventually lead to something probably in book two or at the end of this book and it like all of these chess pieces were set up and we only saw the beginning parts of the game where you know on the pawns are moved and maybe one or two of the important pieces were moved so that's what it felt like but that being said i really enjoyed the world i absolutely just was so gobsmacked by how much i loved i chose a favorite word per video and apparently this time is gobsmacked but anyway i was gobsmacked um with how beautiful the world building was and that just got me so invested because i just it was just such a unique take maybe i just think it's unique because i've not read anything like it but i thought it was a pretty unique uh, approach and i really, really liked how that was done and that just gave me so much joy in the beginning just finding out how this world works that i kind of didn't mind um just like kind of chilling doing nothing and i feel like for me the, the enjoyment i had out of the world building outweighed the very slow pace and again i think it's just that this is like a political fantasy it's more about what the kaku they're talking to why they're talking what tone they took what, what machinations there are set in place and i think that was more, more what this was about rather than you know any big set pieces any big action scenes anything like that but i must say it was a little bit predictable i wasn't really shocked <laughs> anything that happened it was so weird because in my memory i vividly thought when I was reading the synopsis to you guys that I said that something happens I'm not gonna say what but I thought the synopsis said that something happens and that's what's kicking off the book so I thought this a death of a character okay I thought this death of a character was gonna be in the beginning because I thought I read it in the synopsis I don't know why don't ask me why I don't know um but I was like waiting for this character to die and waiting and waiting and waiting and it was like 80 90 percent I was like what what's happening and I went to Goodreads not even a mention of that character dying. I rewatch my videos when I tell the synopsis, not a mention. So I don't know what was up with me, but that was actually, I guess, a pretty big like plot twist, not plot twist, but a culmination of the, of the rising action. And I kind of thought that was gonna happen in the first 10, 10 20% and I was so confused because it didn't, but I just imagined that I, that it's supposed to happen. I don't know what that's about, but I imagined it. But then other parts as well, I felt like, character plot twists betrayals was pretty obvious and i kind of felt like what everyone was about so for an adult novel i wish maybe there was a little bit more but what are you gonna do now let's talk about characters so lexis he's the brother i'm sorry but i was so bored reading his parts i was really into ria's story or raya or however you say it i was really into his twin sister's story and i kept wanting to get back to that bit and that's maybe a bit more what kept me going probably because she has a romance going on and i'm simple but i found his parts very tedious very boring and just kind of anticlimactic on the other hand we have raya who i really liked her perspective i liked what she was going through although she goes through some major character changes and i thought that came out of left field like it just felt not earned so i'm gonna say that like it felt a little bit unearned what she went through but i did still prefer reading from her character and i also really liked um the little roman subplot and all that so maybe that's why i preferred her perspective because i'm like that but yeah there you go and i think the supporting cast like the father the two siblings the love interests the other rulers they were good but it just felt like i wanted more out of all of them i just felt like they could have given me a little bit more i guess that's what the sequel's for i think this is a duology but don't quote me on that so i guess that's what that's for but it just felt a little bit lacking like i didn't really get the other people it just this book felt slow while also being very quick so I don't know what that was about, but it did, it did feel like I was reading it for ages, but also not that much development happened. So I don't know, but that's what I'm thinking. Lastly, it's like about themes. So biggest theme of them all, 
daddy issues. And the daddy issues, they're very interesting because it's not just daddy issues and how that affects main character, the characters themselves and how they view themselves, how they behave, what decisions they make, but then also daddy issues, how they affect um, the sibling relationships was fascinating. Seeing all of that was really, really fun and really fascinating and I really enjoyed it. I felt it was well done, but at the same time, it felt like a beginning to a conversation. Like, it was very subliminal. I don't know, it wasn't like proper discussed, especially the siblings bit, but I'm, I know that's coming in book two because that was set up for, so I'm sure it's gonna come into play. But yeah, daddy issues and how that affected everyone, I thought it was really fun to explore and I would love to learn more and see more of these like siblings relationships because there is four of them. So there, you know, there, there just, plenty of people to to have drama with um, but yeah that was one pretty well and another theme that I really enjoyed and it was kind of part of the world building as well there used to be natural order to the world and all these things happened naturally and then saints came and they took everything and then everything was taken from the saints and now it's like these rulers are responsible for very important parts of uh, the world like someone has to make the waves move because otherwise you know it's all gonna get out of whack or whatever and in that sense they're very important the, the these rulers but then on the other hand they stole it from nature and stuff and it was very fascinating how i didn't feel like there was any good side or any right side i just kind of wanted everyone to leave mother nature alone <laughs> That was my fault. I was like, just give it back. Uh, because uh, all this vying for power um, and it's no one's righteously, right? No one, in, it belonged to no one in the beginning. And yeah, either side of the conflict, I felt like this is dodge and I don't like it. It's like replacing one thing for another, but the two things are the same. You know what I mean? That was a very fascinating thing that I was talking, thinking about while reading it. And I'm very curious how in the sequel it become more apparent what the stance of the book is on this issue and, and how that's going to resolve itself. Because yeah, I felt like oh, there wasn't like a good guy for me to root for, which I enjoy. And I think it's really cool uh, to have some morally gray or like ambiguous question they want to ponder. So that's really cool. I enjoy that. Well, those were all specific sections. Overall thoughts, I did really enjoy it. I do think that I enjoyed the beginning a little bit more than towards the end and having had a couple of days to like sit back from it and just like you know rethink and kind of reflect and I watched uh, read a couple of reviews because I was looking for some maybe offer interviews but there wasn't really any and I first gave it four stars but I'm leaning maybe a little bit more maybe still four maybe 3.5 we'll see I'll come to my um, uh, April wrap up and we'll see what I'll do. I think my main problem, what it was, was that the book is so slow and the pacing was pretty slow um, and not much happened beyond like conversations and thinking. But at the same time, somehow character motivations and decisions felt abrupt. It just to me feels like, you know, if we're just gonna take our time discovering the morality of this world or just like take our time on the political intrigue, um, but then the characters kind of switch alliances and make really big decisions that are so against who they are in the beginning of the book, or at least what they've been conditioned to be. And they just kind of make that decision a little abruptly. Uh, maybe the sequel could kind of take it to, oh, actually, they're just greedy. And I like that. But if they're like pretending this was some deep thinking, I might have a problem. So in the end, I really enjoyed the book. I would recommend it. I think especially for the world building, if you're fascinated by like the Balkans, which is like Italy, Croatia, Greece, that kind of vibe, like ancient, ancient that world. I would really recommend it and I would check it out. I think R Rory Power is clearly a very good writer and I'm very interested to read more from them. But for me, maybe 3.5 slash four stars, but I definitely don't regret reading it. I did have a really good time, especially with the world building. So let me know, what did you think about In the Garden Burning Gold, if you ended up reading it? I would love to know what you thought. I've not really heard that many people talk about it, so I would love to know. And let me know, if you didn't read it, did I convince you to? Answer all of those down below. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you could comment, like, and subscribe, it really helps me out. But that's it for me, and I'll see you in my next one. Bye!